Brett Pontecorvo here at MainStageToAbleton.com, and today we're going to talk about how to set up a keyboard split with a chord trigger in your left hand without using any Macs for Live devices. All right, so we're going to set up a keyboard split with um, only things that you would have in intro or standard, so you, no need for Max for Live for this. Um, that also triggers a pad. Um, so we'll jump right in here. We're going to start in our browser, head over to MIDI Effects, MIDI Effect Rack, and you're going to drag and drop that on a default channel strip. And this is where we're going to process all of our MIDI effects. Um, and the main thing that we are actually doing here is... Uh, creating a chord trigger. Um, so an easy way to do that is go ahead and drag your chord down here. Um, and we need four of them because uh, I am going to build um, a 6, 4, 1, 5 progression. So you can actually duplicate this if you click on it and then hold down Command D. Um, so now you'll see each of these chains has a chord trigger on it. Um, then you should go in here and rename them um, so that you know what you're working with. You don't want to accidentally, um, you know, accidentally change one chord or think you're playing a five chord, it comes out as a one chord. Um, cool, so now we've got our names and we've got our chord triggers. Um, the next thing that we need to do is set this up to only trigger a chord um, when you play a specific key. So we'll start by moving these chains all the way down. Um, and that's really just so it covers only one note. Um, and then we're going to drag them over to line up with the key of your choice. So that's the A that I want to use, and my six chord lines up with that A. Um, and we'll do the same. So here's my F. Here's my C. And here is my G. So we'll double check those. I think that G is not right. There we go. All right, cool. Um, so now let's get into the actual uh, programming of this uh, chord device here. Um, the way this works is it passes your original note through and then adds notes based on the shifts that you set. So when I play this A right now, it's going to pass through an A. And because I have nothing else set, um, it's not going to pass anything else through. But if I were to change this to plus 2, it would pass through a B and plus 3 and so on and so forth. So I have actually created some voicings that I like. Um, and this voice leading works really well for um, a 6415 chord. Um, but you can do whatever you want. Um, my voicing for this chord is 12, 15, and 19 and 23. Um, cool. Uh, let's do that for each chord now. So for the four chord, I like 16, 19, 24, and 28. 16, 19, 24, and 28. And this is way quick. You can just click and type it in. Um, for the one chord, I like 19, 24, 28, and 31. So it's 19, 24, 28, 31. And if you forget these numbers, they're written out for you on the blog page that explains everything that I'm doing in text, if that's an easier method for you. Uh, that link is in the comments. And 24. All right, so what we've just done is we've set up our chord trigger, and it's uh, pretty easy. So now we're on to the fun part. Um, let's drop in a sound um, and hear what's happening. Uh, I have a preset here that I like, um, but you can use any sound that you like or anything that you're working with. Um, this is a preset from Wavetable uh, called Shiny Pad. Um, all right, cool. So let's check it out and see what happens. Uh, here is my A. Here is my F. Here is my C. And here is my G. 
yeah, so that's the way that works. So now we've got a chord trigger thing rocking. Um, now we need to figure out, though, well, how do I get my right hand to do stuff and kind of play in this game? So we're going to group these things together because essentially what we've done is we have created um, a group. So if you click on both of these guys here um, so that it's all selected, right mouse click, group, boom. So now what you've done is you've placed your uh, MIDI rack in an instrument rack. And this is going to allow us to separate things um, by zone. So let's adjust these chains. Um, this is my A that I want to use. And so our one octave that is going to be used for chord triggers should be selected in the chain that you've just created. And that will automatically title itself whatever the name of your instrument was. So let's test that. So we're in business there. That is rocking. Let's add another sound. Um, it can be a lead sound. And the way that we're going to do that is we'll choose our lead sound. This is the one that I am going to be using. And we're going to drag it and drop it, boom, right into our instrument rack. This is Synth 1. Highly recommend it. It's a free um, plug-in and it's great, super powerful. Um, and we're going to set the range that we want for this. So we know that we don't want them to overlap. Um, so I'm going to start, start it at C3. Nice. Um, cool. So now we have our two sounds and they're split um, so I can have my pad and my lead sound all rocking at the same time. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to Ableton and you're switching from Mainstage, I've created an ebook just for you. So head over to my website at MainstageToAbleton.com and download your free copy of the Fast Track Patchless Guide, and you can find that link in the comments below. <laughs>